Hi everyone. We're going to walk through about 1,300 years of history in this area. I'm standing right here by the Ahohokam Pit House that was excavated in the 1970s and has been preserved so that you can still see it here today. Uh, it exists at the very east end of the Fort Lowell Park and um, you're welcome to come visit this at any time. Um, we're going to start at about 700 AD, which we now say 700 CE, the Common Era, 700 in the Common Era, and go through today on this brief walk through history. I want to acknowledge to begin with that this land that we're standing on originally belonged to the ancestors of the Tohono O'odham people who still live in this area. The brief history that we'll talk about now begins with Hohokam life across, along the river. The Pantano River comes in very close to here, meets the Tanka Verde Wash, and becomes what we now know as the Rito. We'll then move from Hohokam life to the military reservation that included uh, this camp here, Fort Lowell, and, that we know as Fort Lowell. And um, after that, we'll look at tuberculosis sanatoriums that existed here from the 1890s through about 1940s and um, other private homes and businesses that still exist here today. Finally, we'll take a brief look at 100 years of preservation that has made it possible for us to visit these ancient sites as well as the historic sites in the area. So sit back, relax. Without aging a year, you'll walk through about 1,300 years of history in this neighborhood. Long before the fort was here, this land was used by people we call Hohokam a word that comes from Ana'odam language and means those who came before. Around 700 to 750 CE, or in the Common Era, Hohokam people settle here because of access to water, water to drink, grow food, and attract animals. Further west, on what is now known as the Atkins property, habitation begins around 950 CE. Hohokam in this area dig foundation pits for their homes place posts to hold up the walls and roof, smear mud plaster on the walls, and smooth the floor with grinding stones. They hunt game, gather edible plants, and grow domesticated crops near the river. On the far eastern edge of Fort Lowell Park, there's an outline of one of the original Hohokam pit houses that you can still see there today. There is known occupation in the Tucson Basin since approximately 11,000 to 9,000 BCE, before the Common Era but prehistoric features and artifacts noted on the Fort Lowell property cover only the time period indicated here. This is a perfect setting to have occupation and farming earlier as found in other parts of Tucson. However, to this date, no evidence has been found of any earlier occupation. Artifacts analyzed by archeologists indicate that it, starting from the top left of this photo and moving right, the people who live here spin cotton to make cloth use paint to decorate, create and decorate pottery, make shell jewelry, and make tools to hunt with. Clearly craftsmen live here at the time. Whether manufacturing for household use or in quantities for trade is unclear. Archaeologists use ceramics to help date an ancient site. Potsherds found on site indicate occupation from approximately 700 CE until about 1250 CE. Then there is a period of about 500 or so years for which we have little information about what is happening on this land. In 1873, the U.S. Army wants to get troops away from the temptations of Camp Lowell in downtown Tucson. They choose this area for the fresh water, plentiful grass for livestock, and plenty of wood for construction and fires. Most fort structures are built with sun-dried adobe bricks made on site. They combine the architecture of southwestern territorial buildings with that of northern Mexico adobe ranch buildings, as shown in this photo of the Fort Lowell Hospital. There are approximately 45 buildings on the site. The fort is a regimental headquarters with a hospital, band, and baseball teams. It is also a main army supply depot. The fort remains active until it is decommissioned in 1891 and the lumber and metal roofs are auctioned off. From the 1890s through the 1940s, fort buildings are used for private homes and then tuberculosis sanatoriums. In the 1890s, some of the fort's abandoned adobe buildings are roofed over and occupied by families from Sonora and Baja, California. They are farmers, ranchers, and builders. The community is known as El Fuerte. 
In 1908, Dixie and Dolly Kate acquire the remaining officers' quarters, the three that exist today on the west side of Craycroft Road. Dixie dies of tuberculosis in 1909, and Dolly Kate opens Mrs. Kate's tuberculosis sanatorium. She names it Kate's Rest Ranch, which she runs until 1928. In 1916, Mrs. Nellie Swan operates another convalescent home in the old Pye Allen's Post Stedler's store on the north side of Fort Lowell Road. Her place is called the Swan Ranch. This sudsy ammonia bottle has been recovered from the site by archaeologists. Sudsy ammonia was used as a disinfectant in tuberculosis. The Harvey Atkins family comes to Tucson in 1926 to cure their daughter's tuberculosis. She dies in 1927 while living at Kate's Rest Ranch. Harvey and Fronia Atkins purchase the Kate's property and operate the Atkins Rest Home there through the 1930s and the 1940s. In 1925, a few blocks away, the Desert Sanatorium and Research Institute opens. It closes during World War II and later reopens as Tucson Medical Center. From the 1930s until the 2000s, private homes and businesses existed in buildings that were once part of the fort or on fort grounds. In the 1930s, Marion Atkins, son of Harvey and Frony Atkins, start the Atkins Trucking and Steel Manufacturing Company. The family builds two small adobe homes, a concrete-clad manufacturing barn, a windmill, and several other buildings on the property. Steel tank production operates into the 2000s. During the 1930s and 40s, Charles, Peter, and Ann Bolsius restore Pye Allen Sutler's store and the quartermaster and commissary storehouses into homes and apartments. They beautifully restored Pye Allen's store as still a private home. Nan and Charles carved doors, lintels, and cupboards to decorate the homes and apartments they create from the ruins. These two hand-carved doors are examples of their work. In 1947, John and Janet Donaldson buy the property adjacent to the Cavalry Corrals, north of Fort Lowell and east of Craycroft Road, and build a home. In the 1990s, the remains of the corrals are covered over to protect them. The Donaldson home still stands. They had three children, and John worked as a rancher. They sell the house in 1978 to John and Susie and Harvey. In 1985, the Hardys sell the parcel to the city of Tucson, and the city leases the property to the Human Adventure Center, a health science museum. Later, it is leased to the Arizona Historical Society and used as an educational center. The building is now vacant. In the 1970s, brother and sister Mike and Judy Margolis purchased the commissary buildings previously renovated into apartments and operate the apartments until the city of Tucson buys the complex in 2004. Interest in historic preservation of Fort Lowell begins in 1918, when the Tucson Chamber of Commerce considers placement of a sign at the fort describing its significance. At this time, the fort is already a popular destination for visitors from Tucson. In 1929, Senate Bill 100 passes, protecting 40 acres on which most of the fort stood. The land is put in trust for the state of Arizona with the Arizona State Museum supervising its use. In 1944, the state puts the land up for auction. It is bought by George Babbitt in an effort to preserve the ruins. Babbitt learns that the Catalina Council of the Boy Scouts is interested in the land, and he sells the 40-acre tract to them for $220. The scouts and volunteers help to put the area into usable shape. Boy Scouts used the area of the fort beginning around 1912 for campouts. They continued to have a presence there into the 1950s. During some of the campouts, they searched for artifacts and repair buildings. Jim Klein, president of the Otis H. Chiduster Scout Museum, remembers learning how to pitch a tent and cook over an open fire at the fort ruins in the 1950s. In 1957, the Boy Scouts can't afford to maintain the property. Pima County buys 37 acres from them. Boy Scouts construct a roof over the hospital to protect what's left of the structure. From 1963 to 1978, Officers Quarters No. 5 is reconstructed. Later, it becomes the Fort Lowell Museum. Cottonwood trees are replanted. The Fort Lowell Multiple Resource Area is now listed on the National Registry of Historic Places 
to protect the prehistoric and historic features and artifacts. During the years 2004 to 2006, Pima County and the City of Tucson acquire the commissary storehouses and the Atkins parcel. The public now owns the entire Fort Lowell site. 2007 to 2015, Pima County and the City of Tucson recognized the need to undertake a long-term plan for the site. They used bond monies for a master plan for stabilization, restoration, and cleanup. The officer's quarters parcel, also known as the Atkins property, is incorporated into the historic zone. They begin with cleanup of the Atkins property, including removal of toxic and other wastes left from the steel manufacturing business. During the cleanup, they collaborate with Desert Archaeology Incorporated to survey and excavate the area. Archaeologists map features, analyze artifacts, and describe the prehistoric and historic activity on the property. A master plan is developed. Much of it has been accomplished today, but the plan needs additional funds to be fully implemented. The goal is eventually to open up the Atkins property to the public as a cultural park. So restoration and preservation work continue. However, the entire area where Fort Lowell existed is now protected for us and for the future.